Righty, Poetry Thursday on the launch pad. Here's Dr. Jenny. Hey. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Happy Poetry Thursday. Um, today I'm going to read a poem by a Scottish poet called Liz Lockhead. Um, I love her stuff. It's great. She's a contemporary poet. And this one is from her collection, The Colour of Black and White. And I'm reading this especially to my friend Zan, my friend from painting class. Um, so, clothes for Helen Simpson. There are dresses, good dresses, dresses you always loved, that are suddenly so clean gone, they never became a duster or leave so much as a square of themselves rubbing round decades later in the rag bag. This was what I learned, listening to my mother and my aunts, when on one of the good days in the long summer holidays, they sat out on back doorsteps, or skirts spread out on a tartan rug on the back green, under the white sheets hung high. What happened to that wee dress? One of my aunts would ask my mother, or she'd ask them, coming out of one of the fridgeless kitchenettes of the fifties with a jug of Boston cream, saying, Johnny, I like me in that costume. Maybe it was my grandmother saying, that was a good coat, that, with all the reverence and gravity, remembrance of such a garment was rightly due. You knew how true it was. She liked good things. When someone said, that was something I always felt right in. What you heard was the real regret, the yearning. If something could be explained away as having been worn till it was well and truly done, this would dismiss it from discussion. But the mystery of that wonderful swagger coat, a great coat, left on a train in the 1930s that disappeared before it was gone back for only minutes later, was enough to make it mythical for me as Joseph's coat of many colours, as the one dream dress every one of them had danced in, and no one was sure who it actually belonged to, or whatever happened. You learned that everything was in the detail, that their mouths made rosebuds to recall, rows of tortuy buttons. Their knowledge of eyes narrowed at darts or edge to edge, bugle beading, Peter Pan collar, gleamed when they as much as said sateen. Something had never been blue, but sax or duck egg, or a shade somewhere between peacock and a light royal, almost an electric blue, but not as gaudy. Talk was of barathea, grograin, water taffeta, or ganza, covered coating. When it came to this stuff stuff, every one of them was her mother's daughter. I'd say every sister had three sisters who were women after their own hearts. If I didn't remember my youngest aunt, the looker, the one who later divorced and remarried with the perfect eyebrows and who never had a bad perm or a tint that went metallic, harsh, who never had a fireside tartan or visible veins measling her legs in their glassy nylons. Smoothing down the glazed cotton over net, splashed with huge impossible blue roses, admiring the this year almond toes of her gorgeous gunmetal shoes and saying nothing, while her mother and her sisters argued enjoyably over a past no one could quite agree the colour of, and that might or might not have been sprigged with tiny flowers. Ooh, Thank you. Amazing, that, isn't it? It's fantastic. I love it. Uh, folks might be hearing the rain beating on yes. the window, but that's a bit of a bit of atmos for you. But I would like to say our plum tree is sprigged with tiny flowers. Oh, yeah, Blossoms yeah, yeah. out. Mm. Yay! So which book is this an excerpt from? 
It's called The Colour of Black and White, Poems 1984 to 2003 by Liz Lockhead. And I didn't attempt any of the Scottish words. I didn't try for a Scottish accent in the reported speech bits because mm. that would just be stupid of me because I can't do a Scottish accent because yeah. I'm not Scottish. True enough, yes. And you didn't yeah. do it in black country either. And I didn't do it in black country well, either. No more than usual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of inevitable with me, really, isn't it? Um, but yeah, and I can remember my mum and her sisters having conversations like that. Mm. Maybe not in such huge mm. detail, but they definitely knew the stuff stuff and Peter Pan collars and bugle beads and darts and sunray pleated skirts and all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I remember yeah. my nan talking about turning coats. Oh, yeah, like kind of uh, renewing them by yeah. basically yeah. turning them inside out. Yeah, but you know, people did do. People own did, and they they take worn out sheets and do sides to middle. Um, but yeah, and I have made clothes, and I know some things like darts and pleats, and mm. 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 I bulk at putting zips in things and doing buttonholes. We've seen it done on the television. Oh, we have. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why I bulk at it. You can see how difficult it is. Okay, dudes, let's right. wrap it up. Yep. Thanks very much. Cheerio. Back next week. See you Bye. next week.